Uh, my chat today is with, uh, I guess we go back just about further than anybody we play on my playlist, but uh, Josh from the Afters, thank you, sir, for taking a moment. Thanks, yeah. Thanks for having me on. I really do think if I look back to eight years ago when I started doing interviews, uh, I've done interviews with you for just about the entire eight years, and that does not apply to everybody. So you may be my <laughs> you may be my, uh, my longest-running chat. We've grown up together. And man, we've done some fun things on the radio. Let's leave all that in the happy memory bank and just move forward talking about some good times for the afters that being a new album congratulations just came out thank you yeah we're excited let me just give my audience a little bit of a background it's always awkward doing an interview with somebody where the albums come out and the first single does not get played by our station because then i'm like (laughs) it's like hey you guys have a new single out that we're not playing But then on the other side of it, I always make sure I let you know, oh, it's a good feeling. We're playing the song. Oh, good news. Well, thank you. We'll play that. Uh, It's called Every Good Thing. We'll play it in just a bit. But the album's called Life is Beautiful, and we'll chat about that in just a couple minutes. I want to dive into uh, envelope number one for you, Josh, okay? Envelope one. I'm ready. Uh, You and I talked a few years back uh, about the effects of, you know, digital music and, and that kind of movement and even illegal downloading and the toll it took on bands. Uh, We're a couple of years past that. Is there a way you can just give our audience, just from a band's perspective, the current state of what it's like from a band here in 2013? All you can do is continue to make good music. And if you're a band that continues to make good music, then your fans are going to be devout. When we go to every record, you know, we just, we try to make the best record that we can. We take the time that we need to do it and uh, try to challenge ourselves to become a better band. You know, we've, we've been blessed and our fans have been loyal. And, and so, uh, you know, the, the music industry is definitely not what it was 10 years ago or even five years ago at this point. But, you know, you can't, you can't worry yourself too much. You just you have to you should be the best band that you can be, have a good live show and, and tour and be faithful to what God's called you to do. When uh, I think it was Kevin Max the other day in an interview said, compared to the way it used to be said people just don't go to shows like they used to so as a lead singer when you look at that audience it's just a different world when you're looking at crowd size you know i think maybe part of it is saturation there's a lot more out there than there was probably you know even five ten years ago um i know that it would be really hard to be a new band it was hard when we started out but now it would be even harder, and I think a lot of that has to do with touring would be so much more expensive because I remember when we started, we bought a van and pulled a trailer behind us, and we would go wherever we could. You know, we'd play for 500 bucks or, or gas money or food or whatever we could do, but you just couldn't do that anymore because of how expensive gas was. I mean, gas was like a buck twenty-five right. a gallon when we started, yeah. and, uh, and now you couldn't even afford to get yourself to the next city. One of our biggest struggles is going to debt because of how expensive it is to, to travel this country. Rolling into town, buying a five cent candy bar. Is that still the same? You bet. Ramen noodles, <laughs> Taco Bell. Envelope two for you, okay? <laughs> Uh, with the new album out, speaking on behalf of my audience, how does it work with the afters when it comes to putting together the best songs from the album? What's kind of the process you guys did for Life is Beautiful? And, and, and sure, what, yeah. what happens if there's tiffs in regards to, I want that? No, that shouldn't be. How do you handle that? Oh, sure. You know, we're fortunate that we get along very well creatively. Um, the four of us in the band, you know, we all write. Um, Matt and I wrote on every song, and then Jordan and Dan wrote on probably half of them. The guys have such high integrity that there, there's never been an issue with a song getting on there just because I was a part of it, or you know, it, it's really the best songs win. And fortunately, because we have similar taste and vision for the group, you know, we we oftentimes um, agree, you know, on, on those songs, and there's rarely been any kind of, you know, any kind of dispute as far as that goes. So we're definitely lucky. I know that those bands have a harder time with that. The idea for Life is Beautiful is it's a collection of stories, all these little vignettes from life, the good things in life, the happy things, the beautiful things, the things we're thankful for, but then also, you know, the pain and the struggles and the harder things that we go through. And then what ties it all together is how God is with us through every one of those moments. He's with us on the happy days, but he's also with us when we walk through the valleys. It's, uh, I, I love this record. It's a record that's really special to me, and I think it has a, a lot of really cool moments. And if a band member does not agree with the song choices, they're gone. You will never see them on an album cover again. <laughs> they disappear into a void. No, Back to the Future, was it? They disappear, and we never <laughs> let them see the light of day. We wrote with somebody new on this record. We had a phone call from uh, Richard Marks, of all people. 
And he said, uh, me and my boys are huge Afters fans. Would you consider letting me fly down to wow. Nashville and riding with you guys? And uh, he said, on my own dime, you know, I, I just would love the opportunity to ride with you guys. And we're like, are you kidding me? That would be amazing. <laughs> that- so uh, he came down for a couple of days. And there's a song on our record called Find Your Way uh, that we wrote with Richard Marks. Junior high, dancing with a girl I had a crush on, with about two feet between us, so we were nowhere near each other, with Richard Marks right here waiting. That would be a treat. He's a legend, you know? He's a legend, yeah. And he's, he's become a good friend since then, and he's just a solid, solid, great guy. So you guys have been touring for over a decade now. In all of your travels, what is the greatest menu item in the world? City, restaurant, and and what is the item, if you can recall? Single item. You know, one of, one of our favorite places in the entire world uh, to go. And if we are anywhere, even within a couple hours, I mean, we, we will send the tour bus out of route uh, to drop us off there so we can eat. Right. There's a place in San Francisco called House of Nanking. It is change your life Chinese food. I mean, there's flavors there that I've never, ever tasted before. And I actually blogged about it and uh, tweeted about it when we were there one time. And we've had lots of fans that have actually visited House of Man King, uh, you know, since then. And no one's ever been disappointed. And the first time we walked in, the chef came up to our table. You know, you walk in, it's kind of a hole-in-the-wall-looking place. Uh, I think they expanded now. You know, ever since we started talking about them, they suddenly expanded. And they all these customers. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but they are bigger now. And... Uh, but the chef came up to our table and he says, have you ever been here before? And we said, no, this is our first time. So he took our menus away and he just started bringing out food. Wow. It's all family style. And like I said, there's flavors that I've never tasted before. Just this beautiful cacophony of Chinese flavors. And um, so we still, you know, if we're anywhere even nearby and we have time, we will swing by there, make it happen. We're in Los Angeles. We will swing out of our way to San Fran and then back I'm down. I'm not even kidding. It is worth it. It would be worth the while. <laughs> hey, that is great customer service, though, to to take your menus and go, trust me, this is going to cost me, but I'm, I'm gaining fans here. Uh, what a great... Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's great. awesome. And, we, and we've been devout ever since. Envelope four for you, Josh. Uh, where is the oddest place you've ever written a song that ended up on an Afters album? You know, one of the odder places that we've written songs is in smelly locker rooms uh, on the road. Uh, we were on a tour with um, with uh, Casting Crowns last fall, and uh, ironically, the song "Life Is Beautiful" was written in rooms that were definitely not beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> but we would uh, we would play these big sports arenas. And uh, sports locker rooms are not the most pleasant places, especially, you know, some of the older arenas, you know, they can be kind of smelly. And, but we would, we would bring all of our music gear into these uh, locker rooms and we kind of turn them into our own little studios. And uh, one day we were just feeling really inspired and, you know, I had this idea for the song Life is Beautiful and, and uh, you know, wanted to write about all the things in life to, that are meaningful to us that we're thankful for, you know, the beautiful things. And, and it just started flowing out. And so even though we were in this place that was very far from beautiful um you know we were definitely inspired to write about the things in our lives that are beautiful and, and uh, that song was was written probably faster than any song we've ever written before uh let's roll with i don't think i've ever asked you this these past eight years but the most memorable fan encounter you've ever had most memorable fan encounter. okay we were in uh we were in arkansas playing a show in Little Rock. And there was a guy who came to the show early and uh, he wanted to kind of hang out. He offered to help. He was a big fan of the band and loved the music. And, and so we got to chatting with him uh, kind of after our sound check and we found out that he was a fireman. He was telling us about some of his stories. And we asked him, you know, what is, what is the craziest experience? If, if you want to share, you know, obviously if it's too hard to share, then, then we don't want to put you in that place. But if, you, if there's anything you could share with us, you know, any crazy story. You know, we'd love to hear. So he uh, he said, well, the craziest thing I've been a part of is I was the first responder on an American Airlines crash here in Little Rock. Our uh, our sound guy, John Perkins, uh, he turned ghost white. And he said, hold on, did you say American Airlines crash in in Little Rock? He said, yeah, I was the first person I helped a lot of the passengers get off. And, and our, our sound guy, John, he said, my sister was on that flight. And survived and there were people that didn't make it on that flight and so they both had this moment i mean they were bawling in tears and 
it was a really cool moment, but it was like, wow, what a small, small world. Yeah, okay, that, I think I'd remember that story, yeah. Hey, Josh, always appreciate the time, and I am looking forward to diving into the new CD. I can't wait. Hopefully, fall, maybe we'll get to see you. I know it's not definite, but... We have an exciting tour for the fall. We're partnering up with uh, with our buddies Building 49 and uh, doing a tour together, and we're going to take out Hot Nelson with us as well. So uh, I think we're going to be coming all over the place, so I uh, hope to see you guys there. All right, very cool. And theafters.com, that's the website we can send people? Yeah, theafters.com, and uh, of course we do Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff. My best to the fellas, and looking forward to seeing you soon, Josh. Thanks, man. Love you, dude. The Q. It's Afternoons with JR. 99.7.